Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting the size of his heart because I really don't know if he's giving or he's taking right now. So you can totally decide what the size of his heart is all on your own. And I'm gonna get into the holiday spirit a little bit and sip on some eggnog. So if you do enjoy this video, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow. This is purple violet. I have fire red, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, green oxide, and Mars black. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil. I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round brush, and I have a number two round brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And again, you could switch those up a little bit if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do have a couple of additional resources for you that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the paints and the brushes and all that good stuff. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the wall. So this is gonna take up a really large area of the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are white, yellow, and brown. And I'm gonna pre-mix myself a creamy wall color. You could certainly have yours whatever color you'd like to. Yours might end up a little bit lighter or darker or more yellow or more brown. You feel free to make it whatever color you'd like. I do want to reserve some of my white for later because we're gonna have some additional details that are gonna need a little bit of white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scoop a little bit of my white into a different compartment and save that for later. And then I'm gonna take the rest of my white and I'm gonna mix a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown with it. And I'm just gonna spin it around. So I'm gonna, I'm looking for just a, like a tan type of color with maybe a little yellow hue in it. You could certainly make yours as light or as dark as you want. If you wanna make it like the color of the wall in your house, feel free to do so. I'm making mine just a nice creamy kind of pale color so it kind of looks like the walls in in my house in a couple of my rooms so you know you just feel free to make it whatever whatever shade you would like and i think that's pretty good for me i've got a nice kind of tannish yellowish kind of color going on and once you've got the color that you like know that when you're working with these um creamy kind of colors they will turn a little bit darker as they dry so just maybe account for that as you're going for that color make sure you know if you want it a little bit lighter or darker just know it will turn a little bit darker as it dries and then i'm going to bring how i know how far down i'm going to bring my wall i'm going to bring it about two-thirds of the way down so to know where that is i can visually pick where my halfway point is then i go about halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas and then it's like somewhere in the middle of there. So maybe like a third to a quarter of the way up your canvas. And then I'll use my brush as a marker, as a measuring tool and do the same thing on the other side. And then I can just kind of bring it across 
It doesn't have to be a perfect line at this point because we're going to be doing a floor line too where the wall meets the floor. So whatever you got going on here is totally fine. It looks like I might almost be more a quarter of the way down, but it's okay however far down you go. And then I'm just going to use that creamy color to paint in the entire wall. So you might find that you want to have maybe a little bit of a gradient. You could have one side of the wall a little bit lighter or darker than the other. It's really totally up to you. My light source is going to be from my from my Christmas tree, which is going to be over here on the left. So it would make sense if I wanted to do a, um, a more dimensional wall if I had the left hand side lighter than the right hand side. So if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. Or even if you didn't mix enough of the color and you ended up getting a little bit darker shade on that right hand side would totally be fine. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your wall all nice and painted on here, all you're going to do is you'll wash and dry this large brush. Just going to make sure I've got it nice and smooth here. So once you get this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the floor. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are brown and tan. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my large brush. I'm going to pick up some of my brown color. I want my floor to be darker where it hits the wall. So I'm going to pick a spot that's the highest unpainted spot that I can see, which is right about here. And I'm going to use my brush as a measuring tool. I'm going to come over to the right hand side, make myself a mark at that height. Use my measuring tool again over here. Looks like it's just about the same. It should theoretically kind of be the same of where you had it initially, but your line might sway a little bit as you um, painted your wall. And then I'm just gonna connect my markers, something like this. And if it's not perfectly straight, don't worry about it. We're gonna have all kinds of things that are gonna disguise it, like a big present and a big tree and all kinds of stuff. So don't feel like you're, you're line has to be super duper perfect here. And then once I've got it in, I'm just going to be doing a left to right brush stroke throughout the rest of the floor with my brown paint and I will be picking up my cream color as well from time to time so that way I have a little bit of uh, different shades and sh you know textures to it and I'm going to try and get it a little bit lighter as it comes down towards the bottom of the floor so that gives it a little bit of dimension while we are looking at it and then let's see what are we going to use for the next step let's use we're going to use our pencil for the next step so once you've got this floor all nice and painted in you can put this large brush away in your water cup and you can take out your pencil and you can just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are drawing an outline for our box, for our present. So I'm gonna be using my pencil and I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that your canvas is dry. So yours might already be dry by now, but if it's not, you can certainly, you know, take, take an extra long break if you want to. Or you can blow on it, <laughs> which that is probably the slowest way to do it. Or you can just whip out a blow dryer and just blow dry it. So whatever method that you feel is going to get your canvas dry, if it's not already, you can certainly do that. And we're gonna use our pencil. I'm gonna give you a couple of dots and we're gonna connect the dots and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have something that looks like a box with a lid that's kind of up in the air right now. So I'm gonna go about halfway from left to right. I'm just gonna eyeball the middle. I might be a little to the left or to the right of it. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna go about an inch and a half above my floor line, inch, inch and a half, somewhere there, make myself a little bit of a dot. Then I'm gonna come directly below it and I'm gonna come about halfway into my floor and make myself another marker. Hopefully you can see that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way over to the right hand side 
but just shy of the edge of my canvas, maybe about three inches, and I'm gonna drop it just a little bit lower than this one. So somewhere about here. Then I'm gonna kind of split the difference between these two and drop it down a little bit lower, maybe about halfway between the distance of here and the bottom. So I'm just about maybe an inch, inch and a half away from the bottom of my canvas right now, something like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another dot above this one. It's gonna be about the same height as, as this one here. So just go directly above and maybe about an inch, inch and a half higher than your, your um, floor line. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So don't feel that these markers are the end all be all. So right now we should have about five markers. I am also going to make one that is above this one that is gonna be just about, maybe a little bit lower than my floor line. So just come up here and maybe somewhere about here. So I've got six markers right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw vertical lines that are gonna connect all of these, the ones that are above each other, something like that, something like that. Now for the bottom, I'm gonna connect these like this and like this. And again, you can see it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. When we go through the painting process, we'll, we'll make it even straighter. Then I'm gonna connect this to here and this to here. And then I just have the last, I have the back section of the um, box. Most of this is gonna be hidden by your Grinch. So I don't want you to feel that this back portion has to be perfect, but if you can, do a similar angled line coming off of this corner, similar to what you have here, something like this. And I'm gonna bring it maybe about, I would say, I, I don't necessarily need it to come exactly above here because again, a lot of this is gonna be hidden, but you want it to come pretty close to above this marker here. So something like that. And then just connect these two in through here. Again, most of this back line is going to be hidden by your Grinch, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're gonna make the, the lid to the box that's gonna be up above. It's gonna be sitting on the Grinch's head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the right-hand side of my canvas. I'm gonna come up from this corner, maybe about two inches, and I'm only about an inch away from the edge of my, my canvas. I'm gonna make two markers that are about, I don't know, a half of an inch to an inch above one another, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over from the right corner of here. I would say maybe about an inch and a half to two inches or about a third of the way between here and here. So something right about there. I'm gonna go straight up, 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 till I am about two to three inches higher than these two dots here. And then I'm gonna make two more dots. One, two, something like that. And then I'm gonna do the same exercise about halfway between here and here. So I'm gonna go about halfway between here and here. And I want my next series of dots to be a little bit higher than this one. So I'm gonna go up, 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 up. So somewhere about here. And then I'll make two more dots that are about an inch away from each other. And then you can just kind of connect those just like that. You've got the vertical lines, something like this. And then you're gonna connect those corners, something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be super duper perfect. And then again, similar to how we created this line and this line, coming off of here, you want this to be a similar angle to this. So. Again, it's gonna get hidden behind the Grinch's head, so it doesn't have to be anything perfect. So something like that, and then something like this. And they could, you could even just get them to disappear somewhere in there. And the, that's all we're doing for that step. I'm like, hmm, seems like there's more, but there's not. So we are going to be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your outline of your box, you can put your pencil down take a little break and get your medium brush out and ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the inside of our box with our medium brush and black paint. So it's just gonna be this, 
um, shape in through here and this one in through here. The only weird part about this is I'm gonna leave a little bit of the edge. I'm gonna actually keep my pencil mark showing because I'm gonna have the edge, the outside edge of those the inside but the top of that <laughs> is gonna be with my present color. So the color of the outside of my box, I will put along the edges on the inside as if that whatever the wrapping paper or whatever actually is curled over the side onto part of the inside of the box. So I'm just painting this black and then I'm gonna leave a little bit of an edge. So even if you just leave your pencil mark, that'll be enough for you to say, oh, okay, that's the edge that I need to paint later with the color that's on the outside of the box. And I'm just gonna do these two sections. I'm not doing anything fancy other than just painting it in black. It's gonna look like it's nice and shadowed and the inside of the, of the um, present. So again, on this side, I'll go right and you, this is, you can go to the edge here. It's the, the, where the inside part would be of the, of the, the inside of the inside of the box. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm just leaving a little bit of an edge right here and here in order to tell myself that I'm going to want to have the exterior color on those two little sections. So it's just a little reminder for myself. If you go all the way to the edge, don't worry about it. You can certainly paint over it, but this way it gives you a little bit of a reminder that you didn't finish it for a reason. And then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got the dark part of the inside of your present painted, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I am gonna be doing the first layer of my exterior color of my box. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using purple, black, and white. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm making myself two shades of purple. I want one pretty darn dark and then the other one is gonna be a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna take my purple paint. I'm gonna save a little bit of it for later, but the rest of the paint that I have here, I'm gonna add just a touch of black to it to get it on the darker side. So once I've got it as dark as I want, I'm gonna add a teeny bit of white to it so it's not see-through. The white helps with the opacity of it so it's not so see-through. And then once I've got it, I like this color. Once I've got the color that I want, I'm gonna take part of it, like maybe half of it, and you might find yourself needing to mix more or whatever, and I'm gonna add a little bit more white to that. So I'm gonna have two shades. I'm gonna have one that is darker and one that's a little bit lighter. And the lighter of the two, I'm gonna put the side that's gonna be closest to my tree is gonna get my lighter purple and the side of the gift basket that is turned away from my tree or farther away from my tree will get the darker color. And then we also have to do something with the little inside seams, but I'll tell you about that in a second. So right now I'm just going right up to the edge of the black. You might be able to see through your paint at this point. I know that I can see through mine. Don't worry about it because we are going to be doing a second layer on our box. So you don't have to worry if it's a little bit see through on you because the second layer that we do later will definitely help to to cover that up. So once I've got my first layer on this, this section here, I'm going to do that same color on this one right here. So my lighter purple is gonna go up and through here. And you might want your purple to be more vibrant or darker than mine, or maybe you wanna have a blue or a red gift basket or gift box. You can certainly have yours whatever color you want to. I just thought that the purple was gonna be a nice complimentary color to my green creature, my green character that's gonna be in the middle of the, of the box. So I did it for, 
for aesthetic purposes, but you can certainly do yours whatever color that you would like to. And then with this light, lighter color, I'm also going to put the far side trim with the light color. The reason why is because my light source is going to come in like this into the inside of the box and hit that far side. So that's where I'm going to put this lighter color over on this back side, something like that. This part you probably are not even going to see once you put the, the Grinch in there and then over on this side in through here. And you might find that you want to use a smaller brush to get these um, little edges in through here, but I'm just going to roll with it. There we go. And now I'm just going to pick up some of my darker purple. You could certainly wash and dry your brush in between or just <laughs> mix that lighter piece that you had on your brush right into the paint as I just did. And then I'm going to color in the far side of the box with the darker color, with the darker purple, something like this. And again, I, I you can see on my canvas that my paint is see-through right now. And if yours is too, don't worry about it because we're going to have that next step that will help to alleviate that. And I'm just getting a good coat on. I'm going to consider this to be like my primer coat for, for my gift box. And we'll be doing highlights and shadows and a second coat on it later. So that will totally help to give you a nice solid color on it. And then again, I'm going to do the dark color up on this remaining area up in through here. So just trying to get my little, my little edge there. And again, if you miss a spot or if your edges aren't perfect, it's all right. Gift boxes can be all wrinkly too. So this does not have to be a really perfect perfect edges on your box. Maybe your maybe the gift wrap has been all all wrinkled and tousled and and ripped a bit from it being opened by the Grinch. But so don't worry if it's not super perfect. And then I'm going to put the dark purple on the edges that wouldn't be hit by the light on those little inside edges. So here we go. Just trying not to not get my hand in wet paint here, which I inevitably will. That's why I always have paint on my hands. I had somebody the other day tell me they love how I always have paint all over me. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't make sense for me to, you know, buy good clothes or anything like that because there is always paint everywhere. There's paint on my hands, there's paint in my hair, there's paint all everywhere. It's just my life. I accept it. All right, so we are going to be using our large paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your gift box, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our Christmas tree. So I'm going to be using my large brush, and I'm going to be using green and black paint, and I'm going to be alternating those two colors. I am going to have mine like a traditional pine Christmas tree that we have where I live. Maybe your holiday trees are a little bit different than mine are, but I'm going to have mine this big, huge, almost triangular shaped tree. I'm going to be alternating black and green, and I'm going to be doing a kind of a down and out flicking motion to get the pine needles or the branches on there. So I'm going to start with both black and green on my brush. And I'm going to give myself kind of a uh, exterior almost outline for it. I'm going to start up in the top left hand corner and I don't want it to look really systematic. So at times I will have longer branches, at times I'm going to have shorter branches. I want it to come not all the way over here, but pretty darn close because I want the Grinch to be able to reach out from the box and be able to touch one of these. So I just got to make sure that I've got it far enough. If my arm is here, it's, yeah, this should be pretty good. And if you need to add some, you know, a longer branch later to make sure that he can reach it, you can certainly do that. But once I start it, now I'm just going to alternate picking up green and black. So you'll see that that ends up a little bit greener in through there. May, next, I'm going to pick up a little bit of black. So now that I've got my exterior kind of profile, now I'm just going to start doing this kind of down and out motion for the entire tree. I want to keep some little peekaboo spots along 
the right hand edge of it so you can see through it and it looks a little bit more natural but through the interior of it I do want it pretty well covered so I will use pretty heavy paint and I'm trying not to over blend it so you'll see that I load, reload my brush often and I've got these really heavy spots of paint but I'm not st sitting in the same spot and doing this a hundred times because then it would all turn out to be one solid color so I'm just going to keep layering on these heavy pieces of paint I load my brush up quite frequently and I'm going to keep making these little swipe marks until I have the entire tree covered so I'm just kind of at this point going a little bit slower because I don't have too many other little spots that need to be covered but and again you can leave those little spots around the edges that you can see through but the interior would make sense if it had more coverage to it and I'm picking up some more green just to get these little pops of, of green on there I know that it's going to be a little bit darker as it dries too so I just want to make sure that you can really see that green popping on here and then we are going to be we're going to switch to our, let's use our, hmm, what do we want to use for, oh, let's use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your tree on here, you can put your large brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are putting the first layer on our Grinch head. So I'm going to use my small brush and I'm just using green paint. So this is again a, again going to be kind of like a primer coat. You're going to be able to see through it. It's not going to look awesome after this step, but at least hopefully we'll have a good shape here. So I've kind of broken this down into a couple of basic shapes. We're going to do like an oval first and then we'll add a couple of little lines onto it. So what you'll want to do is about halfway between this um, spot where the top meets this box and here you'll make yourself a little bit of a mark or conversely maybe about an inch inch and a half up from the corner of this box and then what I'm going to do from the corner of this box here or this part of the box I'm going to come down maybe about a half of an inch to an inch and make myself another marker I'm going to connect these two with like an oval but I want the left side of the oval, this is going to be his big cheek over here. I want this to kind of come out farther than the edge of my box and maybe come about halfway between here and here. So I guess you could make yourself a little bit or maybe about a third of the way right about there. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make myself a big kind of jutting out cheek, something like this. And then as I come down into the box, my prize is over here. So I need this to kind of curve around and, and meet that as well. So you could do whatever direction you want, but something something along this will, will get, get you going. And then I gotta meet the top two. So again, I'm just going for kind of a long sideways oval. And then I want to I'm going to put the, the top of his head somewhere in through here. So I would come in maybe about an inch and a half to two inches through this box and make yourself a curved line like that. And then from almost this corner of the, the box up in through here, you can make yourself another curved line, something I would say like that. And you might find yourself needing to reshape this once you you know once you've got it on there but the, I'm just starting with these basic shapes I'm gonna give them a little bit of a chin somewhere in through here so this is gonna be a little bit of a bump out right in through there and then I got to give them a little bit of a neck so I want my neck to come a little bit to the left of where this cheek curves in here so something like that and then a little bit to the right of his chin something like this and then I'm just going to color it in with green paint. So these are going to be these little shapes that we created will form into the full, the full head and face and stuff. But we just needed these basic shapes on here to allow us to create a base coat 
that will be easy to paint on and to cover up these these objects that are behind it. So now that I've got that outline on there, I'm just using my brush. I'm painting in a layer of green paint. You can see it's splotchy, it's scratchy looking. It doesn't need to look perfect. It is just acting as our base coat. I'm going kind of slow up here so I don't color into my the exterior part of my box. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat of your head on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm doing the base coat for my arm. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint because I'm gonna have some a red shirt on him and I already have a black base right here. So this already uh, provides me with a good base for inside the box. So I'm gonna do a black base for the arm as well. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint and I need, my hand is gonna be somewhere up in this vicinity. So I'm gonna have my arm kind of coming out of the box like this and then kind of up in a diagonal. So I'm gonna start with my elbow, so that gives me kind of a good um, place to, to go from there. So I'm gonna have my elbow kind of coming out in a diagonal kind of direction this way, and then kind of going up like this. Now I'm going into the forearm. You probably could have figured that I'd pass the elbow by now. <laughs> and I'm gonna have the wrist is gonna be about the same height as the middle of his cheek. So maybe somewhere in through here. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring it over a little. My arm is gonna be pretty, pretty darn skinny. And the inside part of my elbow, I'm gonna put kind of at a diagonal from the outside part of my elbow. So something like that. So that's where the arm will bend. So something like this, and then it's gonna bend. I think I'm gonna have it coming, cause he doesn't have much of a neck. So I'm gonna have this arm coming somewhere in this vicinity, something like this. And then I'm just gonna paint this in black. And then we, that's all we need to do for that. Al, we're gonna do for the, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step, maybe a little bit higher in through here. Maybe I'm gonna cover this whole corner of the box. Um, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got the arm on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our main um, ornament that the, that the Grinch is either taking or giving. I haven't decided what he's doing here. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm using red paint. I want this to be uh, about, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half to two inches away from the actual wrist so I have room to put the hand. And if you don't have a good branch that, that this can kind of connect to, you can always put one later. But I'm gonna be doing just a circle for my ornament. You could have whatever kind of ornament that you would like, but I'm just gonna have a red circle for my ornament Oh, I didn't even tell you what colors I'm using. I'm using red and black. <laughs> so I've got a red circle, small brush, and then once I've got the circle on there, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of black paint without washing my brush, and I'm gonna have the, um, the string coming from the tree in kind of a diagonal or a saggy kind of way, like he's pulling it or putting it on. So something like this, I want it to look like there's a little bit of movement to it, like that and then I'll put a little kind of topper thing. I don't know what they're called. The thing that holds the ornament onto the string, something like that. And then that's all I'm gonna do for my first coat of the ornament. I am gonna be using my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your ornament on here, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the first layer on the hand and the hair for the Grinch. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using just green paint. So I'm gonna put some hair on him first. It's gonna be cute little hair that's maybe being smushed by the box. So I've got it coming out in through here and I'm just doing a couple of streaks of green paint, something like that. 
He's got little cute pieces of hair on the side of his cheek. So I'm gonna bring some pieces out like this. And again, remember, it's not gonna look awesome at this stage because this is just the first layer of it. So it's gonna be see-through. We're just adding, we're just putting it all in place right now. And then for the hand, so the hand I wanted to kind of naturally look like it's grabbing or putting this um, ornament on the tree. And he's got long, like, pointy, hairy kind of fingers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, and I think these only got four fingers, like three, three, these fingers and then a thumb. I could be wrong, but that's what I think is, is happening. So I'm going to make um, these marks up at the top like this. It's gonna come up, then it's gonna come back down like this. This is gonna be two of the fingers. We will add the separating um, little details, like a little shadow later, but I'm gonna do that. I've got a little pinky or the other little finger coming, something like that. This is the ma main section of his hand in through here, and it's gotta to connect to the um, wrist. So I made it bump out a little bit. Um, in through like this area and then I need to put a thumb on there but I think I'm gonna make this just a little bit thicker something like that this is like the palm of his hand and then I need a little thumb to clasp on to the underside here so I want it to come something like this down like that and then this will reach like this and of course you can certainly you know, manipulate yours a little bit differently than mine, but that's what I'm gonna do for that step. I am gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your hand and hair started, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting a shadow underneath our box. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black and brown paint, but you might want to just use brown. Really, you're just going for something that's darker than whatever your floor is. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. My light source is the tree, so I want my shadow to be underneath my box, maybe even a little bit in the front, just to show a little bit of dimension, and off to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of underline my box, something like this. And this helps to make your lines or the, the bottom edge of the box a little bit straighter if you needed to. I'm gonna come up the back side of it a little bit. This is gonna show a little dimension on it. And then I'm gonna take this color and I'm just gonna kind of rub it into the floor. So I'm not looking for something photorealistic here. I'm just looking for something kind of fun. So I don't need it to be really perfect. I just want it to represent some kind of shadow behind that box in through there. You can have clean edges, you can have not so clean edges. I'm going to make it look a little bit like it's um, not fully um, straight like that. I want it to look like maybe there's a little bit of a corner so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of shape in through here and then I do want to have something in the front along the little front edge of it so I'm gonna, and you might not wanna have too much paint on your brush when you go to do this front edge, because I just want a little, a little something underneath the edge of there just to tell the viewer that maybe, you know, it's casting a little bit of a shadow. And if you feel like you've done too much or you've, you know, it's just, you know, too dark for you, you can always bring back some of that original floor color. Because again, it doesn't have to be black, black, black. It can just be whatever the floor color is, only a little bit darker. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got the shadow on the floor, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I'm doing my first layer for my ribbons that are gonna be just strewed about. You can certainly make your ribbons whatever way you want. You can have more than I have. You can have them different colors. Have fun with it. It can look like confetti all over the place. It could be look like a big, you know, 
party full of ribbons, whatever you want to do is totally fine. I'm going to use my medium brush and I'm going to, for my base coat, I'm just going to use that darker purple that I had. So I am loading my brush with the darker purple and I'm doing a whole bunch of squiggles. So I'm going to start up, maybe I'll have one up in through here and maybe this one just kind of comes like that. And I might, you know, need to do just two layers just to get a good coverage or just use a lot of paint on your brush and you can get a nice, a nice coat. Um, I want these to look like they're kind of coming from the top of the box. We'll be able to make them look better on the second round, but the first round, again, is just a base coat for it. We'll be putting highlights and shadows on them to make them look kind of three-dimensional on the next pass. And if you bump into your box, it's, it's all right. I'm going to have another one maybe coming in through here. And again, you can have them in whatever curly Q format you want. Maybe you want like a big bow kind of thing. I'm just going for curly cues. <laughs> I'm going to have one coming out here. And the harder I press my, my brush, the thicker that piece of ribbon looks. So you can totally, oh my God, you know what this is reminding me of? You guys probably aren't going to really, this isn't going to matter much to you, but one of the very first paintings I ever did was a mural on my bedroom wall when I was probably, I don't know, 15 or 16. And it was this huge ribbon <laughs> on my wall. It was just the, the most random thing. This is totally bringing me back to, to that ribbon wall that I painted uh, many years ago. And so, so I have experience painting, painting ribbons, apparently. <laughs> I'm, new, I'm putting this one strategically over the edge of that shadow. You can certainly put yours wherever you want. And then we are going to be using, let's see, we're going to use, let's use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your ribbons, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the shirt on our uh, little Grinch here. I'm going to use my medium brush and I'm using red, black, and white. So how I'm going to do this is I'm starting with just red paint and I'm painting the sleeve and you're going to be able to see some of the black through. This was my intent. I wanted it to look kind of like it's in the shadow a little bit. Um, when I go down in through the box, I don't want, I'm not going to be painting the whole thing. I'm actually going to bring this line right here over to like somewhere in this corner, somewhere around there. And then over on, I'm going to leave a little bit of room here. So I'm going to make like a little bit of a spot here. I'm going to paint all of this in with my red. And then we're going to do a little red area over on his other shoulder. And then we'll put a little bit of a white fluffy fringe around the collar and around his, um, his wrist. So I've got that. I've got a little red piece that's going to, if this is his neck here, we'll save a little bit of room for the, um, for the white fluffy part. So something like that. We need to give him a little bit of a shoulder like that and just paint it in red. And you're going to have different tones of red which is going to look super cool then you wash and dry that medium brush and I'm going to put some white paint on it and I'm going to do these little polka dots around the wrist so something like this and we're going to be um, doing a little bit of a black outline later too so if it doesn't come out perfect right now no worries you could I suppose put a touch of black on your brush right now to make it look a little dimensional, which we're going to do over on the neck too. So white paint is where I'm going to start. I'm just making some little polka dots to make it look like fluff, like a fluffy collar. As I get down towards this area, I'm going to use a little bit of black on my brush also. Not a lot, just a little bit to make it uh, look like it's in the shadows a little bit. And I'm not going overboard. I'm not over blending it because I want it to look kind of fluffy. And if you bump into some of your wet red, you can just let it dry for a second and you can paint over it. I think I might have just bumped into it a little bit, but 
that's all right. And then we are going to be using, let's see, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your clothing on here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. Oops. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the, the second layer on the face and the hair and the hand. So all these green areas, we're doing a second layer. So this is gonna be the layer that's gonna make them not so see-through and it's gonna give a little bit of dimension in that face. So the colors I'm using are green, yellow, and white, and I'm gonna be using my medium brush. And the best suggestion that I can give to you during this process is never have a ton of paint on your brush at any one time. You wanna use very little paint so that way you can kind of manipulate where you want it lighter and where you want it darker. I'm gonna have the, the face part where it kind of puffs out the most is gonna be the lightest and then everywhere else like underneath here is gonna be a little bit darker. The hand can really be any kind of shade of this green that we're gonna be going for, but this area in through here is where you want it to be the lightest. And if you use a little bit of paint, you'll be able to build that, that lightness and, and adjust those colors as you see fit. So I'm gonna pre-mix myself like a yellowy green kind of color. So I'm gonna use some of my yellow, I'm gonna use some of my green, and a touch of my white. And that's gonna be kind of my base coat to do these um, these hairy things with, the hairy things. I guess his face is kind of hairy too, right? His hair and his hand and his face, yeah. They've got some kind of hairy fur stuff on them. So something in this vicinity, so not quite as green as that and obviously more green than the yellow itself. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up in the head region and just kind of put myself on a nice thin coat of this greenish yellow kind of color and i'm going to put a couple of these streaks throughout the hair and again i i want it to have some dimension to it so it, when you're doing the hair itself you don't need to cover over every spot of the original layer you can just kind of put additional pieces of hair on it and then i do want the face to have some of this this yellowy green color on it but I want it to kind of dry fast so I can put a lighter shade in that center area. So that's why I'm doing it pretty thin, a thin coat of it. And while it's drying even more, I'll go do the hand and then I'm gonna come back and make it even lighter within that, um, that front section. And if you want there to be a little bit of a difference between the face and the neck, you could certainly make one lighter or darker than the other. But this um, illustration kind of painting that we're doing does have outlines around it. So when we do the facial, the facial features, one of the um, details is to kind of outline the face. So don't worry too much about the separation in between there, but just know that that's coming. So I'm gonna let this dry for a second. While it's drying, I'm gonna come over to my hand and I'm gonna put a couple of streaks of this yellowy green kind of color in here. And I don't need to cover up all of that original darker green. This is just kind of adding this beautiful, cool, um, dimensional kind of layer. And again, when we go to add the little details, we will add little lines between those fingers. So that helps out too. So this is, pretty, you know, kind of getting to the tacky stage so I can certainly start adding another layer on here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that green that I have here and get it a little bit lighter with a little bit more white and yellow. So this is gonna be for that, for that muzzly kind of muzzle. I don't know, just the bump out part of his face. So something a little bit lighter. And again, very little bit of paint on my brush. And I know that I want this to be kind of in through here. And then I'm just gonna kind of gently blend it in with those darker surrounding greens. Even like his little chin could be a little bit lighter. I'm gonna actually wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I feel like I have a little bit too much paint on my brush. And again, I don't want much paint at all because I wanna be able to control what's happening. And I'm just using the side of my brush to just kind of move this paint around, get it to blend in with the, with the neighboring colors. And if you're running into 
issues where your paint is still too wet and you're having difficulty getting it to blend, then you can certainly just stop, take out the blow dryer, blow dry that layer, and just start with a fresh layer and get it get it to go um, get it to dry for yourself and add that little bit of highlight on top of it. I'm going to keep underneath here pretty dark, um, but. I want to make sure that I have a nice full coverage so I just picked up a little bit more of that yellow green because I can see some of that black underneath. Up here is great if that remains dark because we're actually going to be putting a shadow up there anyways um, and if you want to make it a little bit brighter or lighter where those eyes are going to go over here that would work to give you a little bit more dimension and I just kind of keep adding these little kind of bits of paint until I've got this whole um, front area as light as I want and then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute face all nice and highlighted, you can take this brush, wash it and dry it and tweak this as much as you want. You don't have to you don't have to call it quits when I call it quits. You can certainly keep tweaking yours as much as you want. I have a tendency to keep tweaking mine too. So <laughs> you just keep tweaking until you've got it where you want it. And then we'll go on to the next step with that brush. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our box and our ribbons. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using both those original colors of purple, the dark one and the light one, and probably some white too. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start by just doing a second layer on the dark sections and on the light sections. So I just picked up my darker purple and I'm just putting a second layer on here. And you can do it thinner, I mean uh, thicker at this point than you did the first round when you, um, when you did that initial coat on there because this is going to be the end all be all for, for these for these for the package so you can make it as thick paint as you want to so I've got my dark area in through there and you know if you if you need it to blend more or, or do anything fancy then you could certainly just do thin layers thin thin and layer it but I'm gonna just kind of load it on here and get good coverage and I'm doing my darker areas first and while they are kind of drying a little bit. I will go and do my lighter areas and then I'll pop on a quick highlight and shadow to both sections and I'm going to do the same thing for my for my ribbon and I'll show you how I do that. I still got my dark purple on here. I only have this little tiny sliver of the dark purple from over on the inside little section of the box. So again, maybe you need your bigger brush. I have the dark purple on my brush right now, so I think I'm going to while it's on my brush without having to wash it, I'm going to utilize it in what I'm going to call the darker sections of my ribbon. So instead of painting the entire ribbon all together with the dark, I'm going to do what I feel is going to be the inside or the darker sides of the ribbon. So I'm going to do maybe if this is the light side. So the light side for me would be the side where the, um, where the tree is. So I just kind of sweat. So this will be light and this will be light. And I'm going to have this is going to be kind of a darker side. Maybe this will be a little darker side. Maybe this will be a little darker side. And ribbons are fun because they can really be twisted whatever way you imagine them to be. Maybe I'll have a little dark side underneath here too. Yeah, that's going to look good. All right, and then I'm going to um, pick up some of my my lighter purple, and I'm going to paint my second coat. Oops, that was a little heavy on the paint. Um, paint my second light layer on the box, so something like this. And this is a great time if you need to reshape it in any way. Now's the time to do that. So if your edges need a little bit of cleaning up, Now's the time to do that. Or if you feel like one side of your box should have been a little bit bigger than it is, you can certainly pull out those corners or those edges just to get it to look like it um, is proportionately working. And again, I'm just kind of adding my lighter 
purple onto here, and then I will go ahead and add it to the top portion of the box. Looks like I've got a couple of different tones of purple on here, which is which is great, great fun. Maybe the, the lights from the tree are casting different different hues on my box here. Or maybe my palette was a little bit messier than I had anticipated. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just bring that light color up in through here. And again, you can reshape the edges of that box if you need to. And once I've got this section, then I'll pull this light color into those little inside edges of the box. So something like this, bringing it over here on the right hand side. I had a little unpainted spot there that I can, oops, as I'm painting the Grinch's head purple, something like that. And then I just need those two little tiny corners in through here. Just put my hand in some wet paint again. I'm going a little bit slower to the, for these little tiny edges here. One there, oh, this one's in between the hair, so I'm just gonna kind of work through that like that. And then I will use this lighter purple on the highlighted parts of my ribbon. So I'm gonna go something like that, like that. I want it to look like it blends together, so I think I need to pick up a little bit more of my darker. So just so it kind of works, the light works into the dark on the ribbons. That's that's what the, the trick to this um, three-dimensional kind of illusion for the ribbons is. You have, the light has to, the light side has to naturally kind of blend into that darker side as it's, as it's turning the ribbon corner. So something like that. And of course you can certainly keep tweaking yours and have fun with, with the, um, the light spots and the dark spots. But if you can get that light area to almost fade into the dark area that's that's where the that's where the three-dimensional magic will happen for you and you can keep adding layers until you get that perfect um kind of highlighted area blending into the unhighlighted area oops i missed one little spot in through here and then i am going to just quickly add a little highlight to the edges of the box. So I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, or if you feel like it's overloaded, just wash and dry it. And I'm gonna take a little bit of white on my brush, and on this upper edge here, while my under, my paint is still wet underneath there, and I'm okay with that. If your paint has dried, maybe you just go for a lighter shade of purple. So I put the white on there, I'm wiping it off on my paper towel, and I'm just gonna kind of get this to softly blend in with the neighboring light purple. And this just gives it that extra little punch of highlight. You, you know, you don't necessarily have to do it if you, if, you, if you like what yours is looking like. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this right edge, right in through here. Again, it just adds that extra little bit of a highlight or a gradient on the edge of the box, which makes it look a little bit more natural. And you can conversely do the same thing with a shadow on the dark side. So I could wash and dry my brush and pick up a little bit of the black and I can put a shadow on the back side of the box with a little bit of black. So I just put a little bit of black there and then you pick up your dark purple if you need to and get it to blend in. So if you wanna put the the highlight on the light part, on the light side, and then a shadow on the back corner of the box. That will totally work. And if you feel like you needed to, you could also put a little bit of a highlight even on the dark side of the box. You could certainly put a little bit of that lighter purple up at the top, just a little accent up at that little top edge because it's higher and it's closer to, it's closer to your light source. And then you can just keep tweaking that until you feel like you've got it all nice and completed. And then we are gonna be switching to our tiny brush for the next step. So once you've got your box and your ribbons completed, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing this ornament here. I'm gonna use my small brush. I will be using red 
black, white, and yellow. And I'm gonna be putting a second coat on it and I'm gonna do a shadow and a highlight and a little twinkly spot. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I just put red paint on my brush. So I'm doing a second coat just to make sure that it's fully painted in here. Then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black paint without washing my brush. So right now I have red and black paint on my brush and I'm putting my shadow on the opposite side of where the tree is. So I am just kind of outlining this back portion of the, of the ornament. It's funny when I go to do small details, I, I really, my, my words start to slow down <laughs> as my paintbrush slows down. And then I'm gonna get that black to just blend in with the red along this edge here. So something like this. And if you feel you need to, you can pick up a little bit more red just to make sure that you've got those two blended in nicely together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up yellow and white for my little highlight part. And I'm using yellow in addition to the white because I know that my red's probably still dry. And if I was to just put white on top of it, I'd have a big pink spot. And that yellow helps to counteract um, the pink because white and red make pink and I don't want that. So I'm gonna put my highlight over here on the left. So something like that. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna get some of this little highlight to just blend into the actual ball itself. Something like this. And then if you want to have a little sparkly part then you can just pick up a touch of the white and just give yourself a little tiny twinkle spot right there. And if you also want to, with your black and your white or any combination thereof, you can give yourself little kind of details in your string or in that little topper. You can certainly have fun with that as much as you want to. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you have this cute little ornament all nice and painted, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing the Grinch. So this is gonna be a whole bunch of little kind of details for the face and a little bit around the hand. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are yellow, white, black, and maybe a little brown too. And you'll see, you'll see why in a second. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna put the base coat of the eyes in place. So I'm gonna be using yellow and white. The color of these eyes are pretty yellow, but I know that my yellow is really see-through, so I know I'm gonna need white to help make it not be see-through. So I've got yellow and white that I'm kind of pre-mixing on my palette. These eyes are kind of, like a teardrop kind of shape. I'm gonna be doing them in this um, area. He's gonna be looking at the tree. We're gonna have a partial one for the left side, for our left, his right, and then a full one for the other one. So the eye, it, it, his nose is gonna be somewhere in this vicinity, so the eyes are somewhere in here. So I'm gonna start about halfway, make sure I didn't have too much paint on my brush, maybe close to the edge of my um, box edge something like this and then just bring it out like this and then I'm going to do a nice thin coat of my yellow white mixture just to make sure you can really see it on top of that and then I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye so it's not very far away from this one so maybe about a half of an inch away something like this and it comes out and up into this little corner up here and then it has this nice round shape to the bottom of it so something like that and then once you've got those on there you're just gonna let them dry for a minute we're gonna wash and dry that small brush and we're gonna put a whole bunch of little black outlines so I'm gonna put black paint on my brush I'm going to be outlining my hand and my wrist area here so I just have black paint on my brush I'm going to be using like a, a loose brush stroke if you feel that this is 
too outline-y for you. You can certainly use black with a little bit of green, a thin brush. It doesn't have to be a clean outline. I don't have a clean outline. I'm just kind of wisping in this um, almost like a shadowy kind of outline to it. But if you could have yours really distinct, you could have yours on the wispier side, whatever works for you. I'm just uh, making it look like there's um, almost little definition in the fur maybe that is making up his hand here so again I'm just really wisping in these exterior lines I'm going to do the same thing when I go and do um, the little fingers in through here because there's going to be a little separation between these two fingers something like that and maybe this goes and flips up a little bit at the edge to show that they've got he's got those little pointy pieces of fur at the edge of his um fingers and you know maybe you want a smaller a smaller brush or you know whatever whatever you need to do to to get this into an area that's visually appealing for you yep that looks good i'm going to outline this little um piece on his wrist so it really pops out something like that if you need to you can also do the one around his neck it looks like i've got mine pretty pretty well outlined maybe a little bit more black back here and under here to make sure it looks like there's little shadows but mine's pretty pretty good so far um and then i'm going to start to do some stuff on the face so i definitely want to give the chin something so again i don't have much paint on my brush i'm really looking for this to be more just kind of loose sketchy kind of lines um but if you feel like you go too far or you want to lighten yours up a little bit bring back some of the green bring back some of the the yellowy kind of color this is meant to look kind of like fur or hair underneath the the chin area so again i'm just kind of using these light sketchy lines i'm going to put some in through this hair over here that flips out over the side you can also put a little bit of a water in your black paint that's going to give you um, almost like an ink kind of consistency that will help to give you more um, defined little lines. So we've got to travel into the face and give, give them a mouth too and a nose. So I'm going to start with the nose because that can kind of give me a, a starting point and a grounding point and we can build everything else off that. So he's got a little button nose that's going to be between the eyes and just a little bit further down. So I'm just going to give myself a messy little kind of circly thing in through there. I'm going to give a little um, crease in his, uh, no, I don't know what that's called, the front of his face. <laughs> he's got a, a like a really um, curiously Cheshire kind of smile. So I'm going to start with the cheek over here and then I'll build my smile from there. So my cheek is going to be Again, I don't want a really clean line, so I'm just going to kind of sketch this on something like that. Maybe have a little couple pieces of hair going down like that. My um, mouth is going to come up over on this side here, and it's going to come down. I'm going to have a little bump in through here, and then it's going to meet over here. So just wanted to kind of give you the idea of where my mouth is traveling. So I'm going to start maybe somewhere in through here and again if you make it too wide or it's not quite the right the the shape that you want you can always kind of manipulate it once once you you've got it on there with um adding some additional colors around it and stuff so just gonna go a little bit slower yep something like that that's super cute and then i need um to go around my eyes. So I'm gonna do a little bit of an outline around my eyes. So something like this. Then I'm gonna go something like this. And again, doesn't have to be super duper perfect. He's got a couple of little horseshoe pupils in his eyes. So I'm gonna do one like that and then this one maybe you don't see the whole thing maybe something like that need some cute eyebrows so he's got really hairy eyebrows i'm gonna have this one and they're really kind of curious and they're up really high so maybe something 
like this. Oh my God, he's looking so cute. I don't know if the Grinch would want me to call him cute, but he's looking cute right now. Something like that. And then he's even got a couple of cute little eyelashes. So up in the corner of this eye, gonna put a couple of, of cute eyelashes. Yeah, that's, that's adorable. And then what I, if you want to, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna maybe add a little bit of a highlight or a little bit of that lighter yellow into this, this hair that's coming out here. I want you to really be able to see that. And then if you wanted to or needed to, you could also put a little shadow at the top of the head with a touch of brown on your brush. I just put a touch of brown and you can make this little section of the head go a touch darker and that's going to make it look like that's in the shadow. And then that's all I'm gonna do for my adorable Grinch. I'm gonna be using my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your Grinch all nice and painted, you can put your small brush away, get out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the ornaments on our big Christmas tree. So these will be the smaller ones. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, yellow, purple, in any shade of purple you want, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make a whole bunch of circles. I'm using heavy paint so I can get it in one shot here. Most of them are just gonna be circles, but if you want them to look like there's a little bit of dimension to it, you can certainly put like the bottom part of a circle underneath one of your branches and that'll make it look like part of it's hidden. You also want to put some on the exterior so they look like they're hanging from the edges of the um, of the branches and stuff. And I'm just going to make as many as I want. You can have, you know, 362, you could have four, you could really just go to town. You can have them the same size, you can have them different sizes, whatever is visually appealing to you is great. I'm actually making mine a little bit smaller than that one because I want that one to kind of stick out a little bit, but you can certainly make yours whatever way you want. So I'm going to go through and make as many red ones as I want. And before I go on to the next color, I will add a little bit of a twinkle on my, on my ornaments. So I think maybe I'll have one more down here. I think that's a good amount for my red so I'm gonna without washing my brush I just picked up a little bit of white paint and similar to what I did here with the twinkle I'm just gonna do a little a little tiny swipe in a curved manner and that's gonna give me like a little glow on my on my on my ornaments so now I'm gonna wash and dry that brush I'm gonna go on to my next color which is gonna be purple I'm using some of my straight original purple that wasn't um, turned lighter or darker. And again, you can have as many as you want. You can have them on the edges. You can have them big. You can have them small. Maybe you decide to do ornaments that were representational of the holiday tree from when you were a kid or the ones that are on your tree right now. Whatever you want to do is totally fine. This is the fun part about doing one of these paintings is it doesn't have to look like anything other than what you want it to look like. So I'm just kind of putting on some heavy paint here in kind of a circular motion for mine and then that looks like a good number of, oh, maybe, maybe one more here, good number of purple ones. Now without washing my brush, I am picking up some white paint and I'm gonna do these little swipes. And if you, as you're doing these little twinkle marks or highlighted spots, if at any time it doesn't feel like you're getting the white on there or it's not blending or you know it's not doing what you want, you may have to either wait for that ornament to dry or come in at a, at a second time with it. But usually if you, if you can do it quick enough and just don't think about it too much, just do a little swipe, you'll, you'll get what, you, what you, you're going for. 
So the next color I'm going to do is yellow, and I know that my yellow is going to be really see-through, and I, I don't want it to be. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take my yellow, if I can find some clean yellow here. I, I think I got some left. A little bit of yellow, and then I'm going to add a touch of my white to it. So that way, I still want it really yellow, but I don't want it so see-through. So I've got some good yellow and white on my brush, and then I'm going to just add my my ornaments wherever I want. So I might end up having to do more than one layer on these, but if you put the paint thick enough, you probably will be able to get it in one shot. So something like that. Maybe I'll have a big one. Ooh, there's a little a little sticky clump of paint right there. And again, they don't have to be just circular. You could certainly make them um, long. Maybe you want tinsel hanging from your tree. You can have fun with whatever kind of ornaments and decorations that you'd like for your tree. I've got this one here. Maybe one's coming off of the edge here. I think I want another one over here. Just to add this pop of yellow elsewhere. I really like the yellow. It adds some some cheer to it. I like the yellow and the, I don't know, I like them all. <laughs> I was going to say I like the yellow and the red, but then I like the purple too, so I just like all of the colors, I guess. Maybe I'll put another one up in through here. And then once I've got that layer on there, again, I'm just going to pick up some white paint and do my little highlight twinkle kind of mark and I'm just doing a curved line and you can do it in either direction left or right whatever whatever is visually working for you maybe it's just a dot it doesn't necessarily have to be a curved line and then we have one final step to go once you've got all of your decorations on here and it's going to be done with the tiny brush so you can put this medium brush away take out your tiny brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we are on to the final step, which is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom right, and I'm gonna use red paint to sign this one. I'm gonna sign it in my shadow. I'm gonna use my initials. You could certainly use your first name or the D or a symbol, whatever you want is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very fun and festive image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>